Yo, what's up everyone? Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today. I appreciate it. Today we are going to be diving in and reviewing this machine right here from CNC. This one may be a new one for most of you depending on when you are watching this video. But as of right now, this is a new machine and this one has yet to hit the market. So I thought I'd go ahead and bring you on in-depth review on it so that way you can go ahead and be more acquainted with this machine right here on your end upon its release date or upon its release. Now the machine in question here is going to be the CNC P6. I will go ahead and put some pictures here of the specific specs as well so you can get a look at it digitally. We're gonna go ahead and take a first hand look. We're going to unbox it, take a first hand look at all the specs and just look at the machine in its entirety here in this video. We're gonna test the performance. I'm just gonna relay as much information as I possibly can on this machine right here for you all. As you see, we are working with the uh, CNC P6. It does have a custom CNC Swiss motor. Uh, it does weigh about 172 grams. And typically I never talk about all these specifics within a video because I just show you that because the products and the details are available on the product pages. So I can just encourage you to click that. But since this one has yet to be released, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of run down and give you all an idea of what's to be expected from this specific CNC P6 tattoo machine. Now, the uh, weight, again, is 172 grams. The stroke length is 3, 3.3, 3.6, 3.8, and 4 millimeter, or mm. The color, if I'm correct, this one's going to be in black and gold. The voltage is going to range from 7 to 11. However, I am going to go ahead and drop it into the 5 range to see if we can stipple with this machine as well. And uh, it does have an adjustable stroke on the fly. It is RCA input as well. And that is pretty much it. Um, those are the specs. And again, I'm leaving this on the screen here so that way you can get a good idea and consume the information accordingly. Now, with that being said, what I would like to do from here on out is I'm going to take a look at the box up close. We're going to go ahead and unbox this and take a first-hand look at the CNC P6 right here with you all. So as you can see, this is the box right here. And this is the CNC MP6. And if I am understanding correctly, this is going to be the first batch right here of the P6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just simply just cut a slit somewhere so that I can get into the box. So with the wrapping removed, the box again is just a standard CNC box per usual. So if you've bought an ACNC product, you're very familiar and acquainted with this box right here. So what we're going to do now is open the hood. And right off the bat, as we can see, we are greeted with the machine. To my understanding, I don't believe my specific machine is going to come with the user manual. However, um, when the release date comes, you all will receive a user manual as well on your end. I'm going to remove the machine. As you can see, it comes in a nice felt padded bag there. It does have a pad here, this bag, or this, uh, this pouch here. And we do have a certificate here. You get warranty information right here, as you see. So CNC is really stepping up their game. I've never had a problem with CNC's customer service or anything like that. When I've had issues with my machines, I simply email them and the issues always resolve. So I'm really glad that they're also including these certificates and warranty guarantees as well. That's awesome. That's a really good thing. That's heading in the right direction. As you can see, we have some O-rings and an ultralight RCA cord there. That's great. Now, the machine itself, this right here, is what everyone wants to see. So we're going to take a look at this firsthand. And here is the first look at the CNC P6. Now, off the bat, what I am going to say is it has a nice weight to it. I'm a big fan. For those who are subscribed or have been subscribed to my channel, you're going to, you will know that I'm a big fan of the short pin style tattoo machine. So this one right here off the bat, I mean, I'm loving it. I am again, I may be biased, and again, I point that out because I prefer pin style machines over coils. So for me personally though, sitting in my hand, it does have a nice way. I do love the design and I love that gold right there as well. As you can see, the machine is adjustable on the fly so you can adjust the stroke on the fly so you can start at three, 
you can go to 3.3 and as i'm adjusting it i do feel it lock into place as well that's a 3.6 3.8 and then you have the four and I can feel it lock in between right here. So it's a very sturdy locking mechanism as well. And the grip right here is also click grip. As you can see. So at first glance, unboxing it with you all, this is just my first impressions. I'm a fan of this machine. I'm liking the build. The overall build is very, very nice. I am going to fire it up and we're going to look at the adjustable stroke real time and we're gonna see how that works and functions as well but right now at first glance this machine right here is a very nice machine and again this is a cnc p6 for those who are not familiar with this machine i'm gonna go ahead and give you a full 360 view on this so that way you can really see the machine up close and it's in in its entirety let me show you right here we will also get into assembly and disassembly as well and bring a little more light for you all. So as you can see, and then the RCA as well. I'm gonna put it in my hand here. Let me go back to the RCA so you can see that, the design here. I like that little groove right there. So as you can see, it's a uh, relatively small machine. It's not a big machine at all. It fits in my hand wonderfully. It has a nice balanced weight. So if I'm using a RCA quick cord, even a uh, wireless power supply, it's still gonna feel balanced. I'm very excited to get into the performance. I wanna see the motor. I want to jump into assembly and disassembly. I want to see how easy this machine will be to maintain as well. We're gonna go ahead and get into that. We will get into wrapping. We're gonna get into looking at the adjustable stroke up close and in person as well to see how that performs. So stay tuned. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. We will be bringing more videos like this. So let's go ahead and start diving into an in-depth review here with you all. So overall though, I do love the fact that we can switch from a smaller, a shorter stroke to a longer stroke on the fly with just a simple turn of the top portion here like so. And then I do love the fact that, you know, we can just click the needle depth accordingly from here. So that's one of my favorite features. And again, I'm actually gonna show you up close real time the adjustments here so that way we can get a first hand look at it but that's one big key feature that i am noticing me personally i'll probably stay maybe right around somewhere in this area i probably have the stroke right around there um, it just depends to each their own. It depends on what you are going for. I will make another in-depth review on, you know, different stroke lengths, and we will talk more about that in another video. But for now, I want to stick to the machine, and I want to show you the key points on this machine right here and just shed some information on what I personally like about this machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear away right here so that way I can go ahead and wrap the machine and i can show you all the adjustable strokes on the fly as well so before we actually wrap the machine and i get into that i want to show you the adjustable strokes on the fly so i'm going to grab a quill needle cartridge right here and i want to show you that the cartridges go in with no problem there is no snag there's nothing harsh about it lock into place and they don't come out even if i try to pull it so it's very nice. That is a cool cartridge. Here we have a CNC police cartridge right here. As you can see, same thing. Smooth, easy, nice, just the way it should be. For those who are curious about that, easy. And um, typically some machines will give me trouble where I have to like grab a napkin, put it around here to grip it hard enough to turn. Not this one. This one's very, very smooth. None of the Q series have ever treated me that way. Um, but yeah, so some machines are a bit more tighter than others. This one I feel is a perfect fit. So the P6 so far is great. Let's actually put a wireless power supply on here. This is going to be the Ink Claw C Charge wireless power supply. And right now we're going to be running at, as you can see, seven volts. And here is how we are pushing. And this is going to be at the three stroke right here, as you see. And then I'm going to adjust it to 3.3. And let's take a good look at the needle. So as you can see, we are adjusting it on the fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm not turning the grip. We're not turning that, we're turning the stroke. 
So as you can see, the arrow is going to go from four to three and the needle is going to change. So we can switch the stroke of the needle on the fly, which I feel is very, very awesome, which is a good thing. And now, uh, especially if you're going to do a design that's very elaborate and that um, requires, you know, multiple style of machines or multiple strokes. And this is ideal. So as you can see, just trying to demonstrate as best I can. So I'm going to leave it on the stroke that I want. For this one, I'm going to leave it at the 3.6. Um, let me see. Or right around there, maybe 3.5-ish. Now nah, let's go with a six. So we're gonna lock it into the 3.6 for now. And then from here, what I can do is I can adjust my needle depth with no problem from this right here. So as you can see, I'm turning the grip right here and the adjusting of the needle depth is seamless, no issues. Very easy, very nice, very straightforward stuff. So the adjustable uh, stroke right here and the cartridge, they definitely do work. It's very easy to get to where it needs to be. And for me, that's a big deal because um, one thing that I hate is when I'm using like a liner, I'll be, uh, I'll use a liner and then let's say when I put in a round shader, the stroke of the round shader, the needle is not sticking out or not hanging where I need it to be. So being able to adjust easily with a nice and easy setup that allows me to adjust either the stroke and or the click grip is ideal for me at least. So for this, let me see where I'm gonna hang my needle out is probably around here. So this is probably the hang that I'm going to be using and I'm going to be using the 3.6 stroke. And again, I could even drop it to right around there should I choose to do so if I wanna use it just dominantly for lining. But for this, I'm gonna lock it into the 3.6 and I'm going to use it at that depth. And even at that, you can see it, the needle tip right here, pay attention, it moves very, very mildly when I lock it into the 3.5. I can see it going in, as you see, we were at 3.3. You can visibly hear the needle's uh, sound change as well. But for this, I think 3.6 is going to hit perfect for me. And I'm going to hang the cool out around that much. So this is going to be the setup that I'm going to use. I'm going to use a wireless power supply over a standard power supply. The way that I see it is if the wireless power supply works then the standard power supply will work just the same. Uh, let's go ahead and 7.5 volts and it feels smooth, no vibration. I have nothing on the machine yet. So I'm going straight to the machine. The machine is giving off a very, very low vibration, which is something that I'm always paying attention to. And it has a nice balanced weight right here as well. So I'm eager to test out the performance of this. I also want to just drop it down to five real quick. So the machine's also pushing at five volts. So that's that's nice. Um, I'm going to check out the stippling capabilities, the pepper, the dot work and all of that. So we're going to go ahead and get there accordingly. But as you can see though, even pushing at 9.5 volts, 10 volts. Nice, smooth, and consistent. Me personally, I never ever use that high of a voltage. I'm always around 7.5. That's where I am at. I'm always adjusting my hand speed to my voltage. However, this is a very, very nice machine. This is a dope machine actually. And I really don't like to say that word as it feels a little juvenile in my opinion. However, for this, that's how I feel. Like it, this just feels like a great solid machine. Now in terms of like the click grip, I didn't show you that, but let's go ahead and remove the click grip right here. And as you can see, it's as simple as one, two, three, you just unscrew. And this is the part of the machine that you have right here. It does have a screw that says or bid remove so I'm assuming that we should not remove that screw so we can autoclave this right here we can put this into an autoclave machine we can go ahead and wipe this down with like some opticide wipe super sandy cloth something to that extent whatever um, you choose to use but as you can see this is the build of the machine I will make a more elaborate video on the breakdown of CNC machines including the p6 as well as I get more acquainted because I don't want to start breaking things down and I'm not sure uh, I'm doing what I or you know I'm not sure I know what I'm doing yet so I'm not going to break down the machine yet for you all in this video however I will show you all how I'm gonna go about wrapping it 
So for wrapping this machine right here, what I'm gonna be using is a CNC. These are also from CNC as well. This is just a simple uh, barrier, a plastic barrier that I'm gonna be using and that I use almost on every one of my machines. It's either this or a saran wrap plastic barrier. So what I'm typically going to do is I'm going to actually, let's see here, grab the machine and I'm going to place it into here like so. And I'm going to cover the components separately. So I'm going to have one barrier around this side right here. So that way I have the ability to adjust the stroke on the fly. And that way I have the ability to change the needle depth on the fly as well as I'm going to need that along the way in my tattoo process. So what I'm doing is I'm putting double barriers. So as you can see, here's one barrier right here. I can actually just kind of leave it there should I choose to do so. So here is one barrier over this part of the machine right here. And then I'm going to grab this plastic barrier and then we can kind of repeat that process with the grip right here. So I'm gonna grab the grip. I'm just simply going to place it on like so. And then I'm going to screw it back in. And then from here, you would wanna go ahead and readjust your needle depth. And then I'm going to repeat that process moving this barrier up like so. So it's very simple. I'm getting a double barrier around my machine and I'm making sure that it's nice and thoroughly wrapped while still having access to change the grip accordingly. So now what I can do is I can insert my wireless power supply. Hopefully it's big enough to go around it. If not, we'll go ahead and work as we need to here since we're just going to be demonstrating. Now, if this was a real tattoo, I probably would have took the time to stretch this all the way around or gotten the saran wrap and put it on there. However, since I'm just going to be demonstrating, we'll skip accordingly. And as you see, I'm going to place in my needle that I line with. And right now we have no needle depth at all. So we are at the 3.6 stroke. So as you can see though, it's just simply turning the plastic like so, and it still allows you to be able to adjust your needle accordingly. And then after I go ahead and adjust that, I simply just get my, my uh, adhesive wrap, wrap it around, and it makes adjusting the exact same thing throughout the entire process. So as you see though, now I have a good hang on my needle and I have a wrapping. I'm able to adjust on the fly throughout my process. So let's grab the adhesive wrap and let's go ahead and place it around here. So here's an adhesive wrap from a company called Finra Tattoo. I will leave links in the description below for you so you can check those out on your end. Now this grip is actually, the grip right here is a nice size grip. So what I'm going to do is I'm still gonna grab a napkin because I wanna make it a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to repeat my process like so. And for those who have been with me on my channel and subscribe, this is basically how I wrap all my machines. It doesn't matter what machine I'm using. This is a very similar approach. They all fluctuate a little bit depending on the machine and the, the design and the build, you know, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull tight on these first few wraps. So that way this goes nowhere throughout the process of me tattooing. Can't go anywhere, it has to stay firmly there. And in order to do that, I pull and I pull and I pull until I'm happy with it. And then the more that I pull, the tighter that it gets and it has a nice grip going around there. And then this also makes it easier for me to adjust my needles on the fly as well. So as you see, we're still at the 3.6 stroke and we also have the ability to adjust the needle depth on the fly, which is a great thing. And I'm just about done wrapping the machine here, like so. So this is how I would go about approaching wrapping the machine. I would leave this right here exposed as my head doesn't really sit there. However, should this bother me, I would just simply wrap this side with adhesive wrap as well. But for now, the P6, this is how I'm going to wrap this specific machine right here. 
So here is the adhesive wrap. Everything is nice and wrapped. As you can see, we have a double barrier around the entire machine. So the machine is hardly exposed. But again, we can autoclave the grip, which is what we will always do after each and every session. And then this right here will be wrapped with saran wrap. So this never gets touched either. This will be closed off. Maybe just with some medical tape right here, some sports tape right around there. And just kind of close it off. But as you see, we're at the 3.6 stroke right there. And this seam right here, I left I didn't put the adhesive over it so that way we have the ability to again adjust the needle depth on the fly as we need it so what i figured we'd do is run some lines on this rose right here with the p6 and then i'm going to bring you up close so you can get a close-up look as well off to the side so i'm going to begin with just pulling a couple of lines with the p6 at 7.5 volts and kind of just relaying what i feel about the machine in real time here as i do so so i'm just going to go ahead and kind of begin right here in the middle I typically start at the bottom, but I'm going to begin right here. So at first glance, it's a bit different. The machine, I'm not, I'm not fully used to it. So adjusting is going to take me a few moments. However, in terms of how it feels like stability and pulling these lines, it definitely feels great, though. As you can see, it's capable of pulling nice, clean, one-pass saturated lines. Let's go ahead and wipe away. As you see, we are stuck with some nice, clean, solid saturated lines there. So let me do this last line right here, and then I will go ahead and bring you up close, so that way you can get a close-up look at what I'm doing down here. And you can get a close-up look at the P6 performance. But right now, it's definitely... It's definitely capable. It has a nice, soft hit as well. Let me bring you up close so I can elaborate more for you all. So here we are up close. The P6 is ready to rock right here. And we're just going to continue. And again, I'm still pushing at 7.5 volts. We're using the CNC P6 with a quill. I believe this is going to be a 007 round liner, if I'm correct. So as you can see, nice, consistent, slow and steady. So what I will say is that the machine has a nice soft hit. It has a, it has a good amount of give to it, like a really soft hit. So that's leading me to believe that it may be good for stipple work. However, don't quote me because we're not there just yet. The P6 has a really soft hit. So right now though, um, I have no complaints, like there's nothing adverse I'm looking, and again, every time I do a review, I'm always looking for the negative in these machines right here, but I kind of felt that the P6 was going to be a solid machine, which is why I wanted to review it. 
and give you all my honest opinion on this machine right here. I wanted to use it for you all real time as well. So overall though, right now I genuinely don't have anything adverse or negative to say. I mean, the, the hit is a bit soft, however, that's subjective. Some may like a really soft hit, some may actually prefer it, some may hate it. And remember, that's with the 3.6 stroke. So when you adjust the stroke, it's also gonna change. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're gonna change from the 3.6 stroke to the 3.8. And we're gonna align with the 3.8 as you see. I'm not sure if you can see through that glare right there, but we are now adjusted at 3.8. And my needle's hanging out a little bit more than what I would want it to. So I'm just gonna be real cautious and mindful because this is prone to wobbles here. So one thing I'm noticing is with the 3.8, it feels like that it's hitting a bit harder to me. With the 3.8, with the 3.8, it does feel like the needle is easier to go into the skin over the 3.6. But again, I come from like a more 3.5 system, so I'm used to that really soft hit. So even at the 3.8, it's doing great. Yeah, so the 3.8 does feel a little bit um, harder hitting, in my opinion, to you it may feel different. But for me, and I wanted to align here with you all real time so that way you can see the true performance of the P6. And right there, I got super, super uncomfortable. I would have never have pulled that line completely. If that was on human skin, I would have tapered in and out. But I just wanted to go ahead and kind of just push these boundaries since this is a demo here, or this is demonstrating. Actually a really nice machine though. overall the performance is great i'm very eager to test out the stippling as that's a big part of my tattooing style and just shading overall in general now for me though i would prefer to be at the, around that 3.6 stroke so that way i have a more versatile machine where i can kind of line smoothly and or shade with that stroke length the 3.8 is just a few you know mm's off however it may make all the difference in terms of the visibility and the read of that tattoo in terms of how hard the machine's hitting if it was a softer hit it may have achieved more smoother results you get my drift So overall, though, you can hear the machine and its performance, the consistency is there. It's performing with consistency, nice and easy. It's performing great, actually, as a matter of fact. 
very consistent. So at the moment, we've tattooed about half of this rose in maybe about seven minutes, and I have no complaints right now. And again, I'm using the 3.8 stroke right now. Let's go ahead and let me just take it up to the final stroke right here. Let's just see. So we're at the four right now as well. Me personally, I feel more comfortable lining at around 3.6, uh, 3.8. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking my stroke back down to 3.8. 4 is not bad either. 4 felt like it was hitting hard. It was hitting straight on, you know, more direct. Now for the rest of this tattoo, I'm going to stick at about 3.6. I'm going to be more on the practical side here of how I would approach using this machine. Me personally, I, I would never really go high into the four stroke range at the moment that could change in the future so right now I'm going to stick with a 3.6 This right here, this specific stroke is one that I'm truly, truly comfortable with using. For me, this 3.6, everything just seems right. 3.8 wasn't bad either. I was just a little concerned when it came to stippling, if that was gonna be a little bit much for my desired effects. However, as you can see though, this is lining just fine. So the CNC P6 definitely lined with prestige I'll add. It, it lines great. So very nice at the moment. No complaints whatsoever, and trust me, as anything arises, I am definitely going to relay everything that I can so that way you are fully aware on your end. But at the moment, I like it. I like the setup. I like the feel of the machine. Very low vibration. The vibration is kind of like you turn the machine on, you kind of forget that there's any vibration because there's just so low vibration on this thing. Um, it feels powerful. This three point. I'm at the three point six stroke right now. The three point six feels great. The three point eight feels great. The uh, four feels strong. You kind of get my drift, and that may change. It may, you know, range and vary for you. So as you see though, we're building this tattoo and it's coming along great. I'm truly loving the P6 here. I might as well just stay real time so you can see the actual tattoo being done as opposed to switching to a time lapse. I may switch to a time lapse on the stipple shading, but for now, the lining's going by swiftly as I'm getting multiple one pass lines here. I'm only working off the tip of my needle, not riding the tube.
Now, if I had to say if there's anything that I don't like about the machine at the moment is the build. The fact that I can't take the entire machine apart in its entirety at the moment just simply because I'm a little bit unaware of the machine's upper components where the motor and all of that's at. Now, that's the only thing though in terms of like sterilizing it and um, making it safe to use over and over and over again it's definitely not going to give me any issues there as i'm pretty sure we can autoclave the grip as well as um, wipe down the exterior components of the machine that could have potentially been touched by anything hazardous So that's for the lining. As you can see, everything came out smooth. This is um, very smooth, this machine right here. And it is not hot, not warm at all, like in any way, shape or form. It's still cool to the touch there. So that's also a good thing. But again, if I had to say anything that I don't like about the machine, it would be the uh, build. Me personally, I love simplistic builds. Let's take the C, uh, CNC Q1 and Q2, for example. Or as a matter of fact, any of the Q series rather, how we can break the machines down into three um, apparent components. That's what I like. But again, I'm gonna bring you all another video on how I sterilize these machines and how I go about doing so correctly. So we can go ahead and just talk about more about the builds of the machines in another video. For now, I wanna go ahead and demonstrate the P6. As you see though, it lined well. I have no complaints whatsoever about the P6's lining performance. This was all done at 7.5. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab a three round liner and we're going to proceed to do some stipple work on here just to kind of test out the performance of the CNC P6 in the lower range of voltages. One thing that I would actually like to do to also demonstrate because I do like to use round shaders within my tattoos is I'm going to get a big wasp round shader, a completely different manufacturer and put it in the P6 and it fits in well, no problem at all. It pushes nicely as well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to outline my entire rows here with a round shader just to give it a little bit more of a desired look that I am going for. But not only that, I also want to demonstrate how the P6 pushes round shader. So let's go ahead and check that out. And I'm still pushing at 7.5 volts. That's not going to change with the round shader. Let me actually bring some more light over on this end for you. For me personally, I love that effect where we have that bolder outline. It's just a two Easter own. Kind of comes from my graffiti background, really, because that's really where um, this idea kind of spawned on me. Or I would typically be outlining the wild style or whatever it is that I was doing with like a different color, exactly like I'm doing now. However, I just decided to, what if I changed the color out with a different bolder configuration and see what happens after that but as you see though it's pushing the round shader with ease there's no problems whatsoever very nice actually and I'm still using the what stroke I think the 3.6 yes we're at 3.6 on the dot I'm locked in there
think the only thing that I'm really doing is adjusting my hand speed to the current voltage here to match up and get that resistance feeling going. <clears throat> For me, I love that look, man. That look is awesome. That pops. A lot of people, you know, some may like that, some may not. Me, I personally love that bold outline look there. And I'm achieving these results with the P6 at 3.6 stroke adjustment or adjusted and using 7.5 volts to line. So as you see, pushing around shaders, this is definitely capable of doing that and more with ease, I'll add. There's no issues pushing around shaders or round liners. So I'm confident that the P6 could push larger configurations such as round shaders, round mags even as well. Um, any configuration of such it could push. And then right now we're gonna get into smaller configurations and we're going to see how the P6 performs in the lower voltage range with the smaller configuration. So let's get into that. So for the smaller configuration, we're going to be using a so long tattoo needle cartridge. As you can see, it's a double zero three round liner right here. So long is a CNC family as well, a family company. I'm going to insert that into the P6. And as we can see, it goes in with ease, no problem at all. No issues going into the P6, locks and loads just fine. I'm going to drop it down to five volts now i'm going to leave my stroke at 3.6 as well and i'm just going to approach it as i normally would and again we're using the cnc p6 at 3.6 stroke adjustment and we are adjusted and we're using it at five volts here with the ink claw c charge wireless power supply i'm just going to do some mild stippling here So I am definitely getting that dotted look that I go for. And this is all gonna come down to your approach, your hand speed and voltage, that matters greatly. And it's gonna vary from artist to artist. For me, I'm still working out and getting used to this machine here. I'm getting well acquainted with it. So that's how I would approach it. As you see, we're getting a nice dotted look there. That's exactly the type of looks that I need. And then I just kind of keep layering on accordingly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick to this right here. And I'm just using the very, very, very tip of my needle to do this. So in terms of stippling, definitely, it's definitely capable of that. I'm getting that nice gradient look that I'm looking for and that I go for. Now again, that's going to vary from artist to artist to East to Rome, but as you can see though, we're getting a nice gradient effect there. And this machine, the P6, I know that the spec stated from seven to 11 volts, if I remember correctly. However, I'm still wanting to push it outside the boundaries and the confines and just to kind of see if it is even capable and how it feels running at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stipple the rest of this rose out here. I'll go ahead and keep some of it real time as I don't want this video to go on too, too long. And then I'll go ahead and switch to a time lapse to kind of just speed that up there. But I'm going to go ahead and let you all watch me uh, build this, the shading here accordingly. <clears throat> so as you see, we have a very, very nice look there. Thank you. 
So as you see the poor shading, I mean, I love it. There's no complaints. Um, no news is good news, but um, since this is a review, right now, as you see, I kind of just like to perform everything in real time, even if it's just mildly, so you can see the behavior of the machine. And I kind of feel that that can kind of tell you more over what I can. But for me, in my personal opinion, for those who are wanting my specific opinion, I, I'm definitely rocking with the P6. This P6 is uh, definitely nice. And again, um, the only reason I rock with it is because of performance. The performance is nice. The performance is there. However, one thing that I'm not truly, truly comfortable with is the fact that I'm not um, familiar with the build just yet. However, we can take a look at that in another video. And the same thing, we're just going to repeat this process all the way through. I'm just using the tip of my needle. You can kind of see though here, I'm getting a nice stipple effect here. Exactly the type of stipple effect. Like this is in the ballpark of where I want and how I want my stippling to look upon stippling. So this is, I don't want this to go on too, too long. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and switch on over to a time lapse. And I'm going to come back out real time and let you know my opinions after I get some more time under my belt upon stippling and, you know, doing a little bit more work that I need to do here. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to a time lapse, finish the shading, and we'll come back. Okay, so here is the rose in its entirety, completely done with the CNC P6. 
and I will say that the machine didn't get hot at any point throughout this entire tattoo. The machine, it didn't give me any adverse hiccups. I used multiple needles from a so long cartridge. I used the T-Rex from Ambition. I used um, the Quill as well. So it was multiple needles and all of them pushed just fine as you saw there in the video. Overall though, I am genuinely happy with the results and I do love the way that this machine performs overall. The P6 is capable of lining. It is capable of uh, stipple shading softly, even though it recommends from seven to 11 volts. I still went down to five. It performed great at that, at that uh, low of a voltage. And I uh, lined, pushed a round shader as well. It pushes bigger configurations as well with ease. And as you can see up close, you can see the actual dots and textures there with the white highlights as well. Overall, I'm very, very happy with the results of this machine. I'm going to definitely give this machine a thumbs up and I give this machine a four stars. Now, I would have given it five had the build been a bit more simplistic for me. But however, for the fact that we are able to adjust the stroke on the fly from four to three, I think that that is a, a reason why we should consider the um, machine being five stars. However, I am more of a simplistic approach for those who are familiar with me. I prefer simplicity over a machine that's a little bit more complex, so that's why I give it four stars for me personally. Again, for me, I am a fan of the P6 as well. I do like the fact that we can adjust that stroke. Every needle worked just fine, didn't overheat. All my essentials are there. I can see myself using this machine time and time again. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much how I feel about the machine. I do highly recommend that you check this machine out upon its release date. If you are interested in that adjustable stroke, then this may be the machine for you. Easy to set up, easy to maintain, easy to use, low vibration, low noise. It's a quality machine. Again, um, I appreciate you tuning in this along. Here is the tattoo once again up close. The CNC P6 checks out from me. Should you have any questions or if I didn't touch base on anything specific that you may have wanted to know at some point throughout this video, please feel free to drop it in the comments below and I'm going to do my best to assist you in the best possible direction. I also have social medias all under the same name. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all under Daniel Yuck at D-A-N-I-E-L y-u-c-k i would genuinely appreciate the support on there as well please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me as i will be bringing more videos like this thank you for tuning in yet again y'all have a great day